Hello, West Ham Network. It is Holly. I hope you're having a good day, a much better day than Sunday, shall we say, after that horrendous, horrendous display. Um, so today we're going to be having a little chat about the things that are going wrong, the things that we need to change, and the things that have shifted massively, I think. In terms of the fan base, there was a very big divide in terms of Moyes in, Moyes out. I've always been one that's probably more, more patient and more like, let's stick with it, let's try and make changes, let's see what can happen. Um, but I think I've even run out of justification of how we can to potentially turn things around if things keep going how they are. Um, so this is what we're going to be chatting about today. This is basically just a massive rant because after the 6-0 result, I just need to talk to someone about it. And I'm choosing to talk to you. Um, so please drop us a comment as well with your thoughts. I know we've all got such different viewpoints and opinions. And I think this is one of the amazing things about West Ham as a fan base is that we actually are in a really unique situation compared to a lot of clubs where we can disagree but not be horrible about it. Or a lot of the time anyway, frustrations do get the best of a lot of us. And when we've just come off the back of a 6-0 loss, it is not easy, is it, to um to feel happy and to feel kind. But we're going to give it a go. So anyway, bringing it back, people were unhappy and have been unhappy for quite a long time with the style of play and the way that we are playing in terms of the, the players that we have and the ability that we've got. We should not be sitting back. We should be able to hold possession. Um, when we were playing on the break and it was working, there were arguments to perhaps this is a good way to play, especially against the better teams in the league. It made sense. You're not always going to have possession against Man City and Liverpool. So yeah, play on the break. But then that dried up and it stopped working for us. And I think that was a massive turning point where we then weren't holding possession possession and didn't know how to do it and um we also weren't able to play on the break and score the goals. Now, for a while, we were scoring enough goals that it didn't matter when we made a few defensive mistakes. But as we've seen yesterday, we're not scoring goals and we are just conceding. So for a while, people were unhappy with the style of play. But the, the difference that has now happened is that we are really, really not getting the results either. Um, when we were playing sort of uninspiring football, I know it wound a lot of people up, but I was kind of like, I've, I've supported West Ham through the, the good times, the bad times. If we're getting the results, like perhaps there's a viewpoint that it's not the end of the world and hopefully we can introduce more exciting ways of playing and hold the ball a bit better and be a bit more exciting. Um, but now we're not getting those results. And it's not just last night that we need to be concerned about. And I think this is what we need to chat about in the most detail because this is the thing that's worrying me is that obviously getting beaten 6-0 terrible but we've also had five goals we've conceded against Liverpool I think it was 5-1 earlier in the season um, or 6-0 I can't even remember off the top of my head but we've conceded a lot of goals against Fulham and Liverpool earlier in the season which is obviously concerning because when you get absolutely battered by another team like that should be a turning point and that should never ever happen again so within a season's worth of time to be having these batterings three times now um, it is concerning and it also does say a lot about our defence and even although we probably go more defensive and try and defend the fact that we're still conceding that number of goals yesterday in such quick succession as well um, is really concerning because you're not going to be able to outscore that in any way but it's actually our last seven results that we really really need to look at to realize that there's a massive problem it's not just a one-off it's not just that we had a bad day or an off day or a couple of players haven't been performing in the last week or two um so since the start of the year we basically since we kicked off 2024 we drew 0-0 with brighton then we drew 1-1 with bristol city in the fa cup after that we lost 1-0 to bristol city in the replay then we drew 2-2 with sheffield united we drew 1-1 with bournemouth and then we lost 3-0 to man united and then obviously yesterday 6-0 defeat to arsenal so what we're looking at there is some games that you would consider difficult we've not been performing, which are the ones that sometimes we used to actually turn up for those um, and probably perform better than we would have expected against the, the top six. But we're also looking at teams that we really should be beating or at least not drawing with. Um, and we're not managing to get those results. So looking back, if you'd have asked me however many months ago, we'd obviously just won our trophy. So things were quite exciting. And it kind of gave Moyes another lifeline because we said, look, we've had a bad time. Things aren't particularly exciting, but look what we've just managed to achieve. And this is more than any of us probably could have expected to achieve in our lifetime, right? We've got a trophy, very exciting. And it gave him a bit more time because we hoped that we could push on and kick on. We've had a good transfer window. We thought that things were going to really be looking up. Um, 
But at the time, the thought of changing manager, and one of the things that always concerns me is the unknown. Bear with me. Don't attack me yet because you're going to see what I'm saying. But I've always been quite like it is It is worth giving managers time to try and work with the tools that they've got because often they inherit a squad that's not theirs. They The tactics aren't sort of aligned with the players that they've got. It takes time to come in to build something, to have transfer windows, bring in players that work for you, and to actually go from there to, to build something that's working. And we were shown glimpses of it actually starting to work. We just won a trophy, amazing time in Prague. Really exciting, best times ever as a West Ham fan. But then the question was where we go from there and whether it's up or down. And there was a lot of divide over whether we needed to move on and go and do better. Um, But then we had a decent enough run of results Obviously, this has changed recently. So originally, it felt somewhat scary to change manager because while we were while we were still getting those results, it seemed like a very big, well, a bigger risk than it does if you're not getting those results. But now we're in serious danger of dropping out of European football. So the question is, how long do you wait? So I saw reports from X and those of in the nose saying that obviously the board are, are holding off um, to a certain point, probably later in the season, to actually renew Moyes' contract or give him a new contract. And the worry is, I guess, how long, how long do you wait for that? Because if there's this uncertainty amongst fans, I can't imagine the uncertainty amongst players as well. They're not performing, they're struggling, they know the fans aren't happy and you don't know whether the manager's there next season. But then on top of that, you start looking at the summer transfer window and we're going to be asking players to buy into our vision, to look at our long-term strategy of where we're going but you don't know who's going to be managing you, which is probably the main thing that players actually care about because they want to be able to thrive. They want to know they'll get game time. They want to know that the manager that is going to be managing them actually cares about them being at the club and wants to give them opportunities. And if it's just a massive question mark and a massive unknown, it makes it so difficult for anybody to buy into the long-term vision and for anybody to feel like there's a plan. And I really, really hope that I'm wrong and that behind the scenes, there's more of a plan and that Tim Stighton and Noble are off right now looking at options for managers that we don't even know about. Um, Nobody knew about De Zerbi at Brighton and then he turned out to be brilliant and everyone loved him there. So it doesn't have to be someone that we're all aware of. We all know there's options that are available, but you can also take managers from other clubs. It happens all the time. So We don't need to necessarily only look at options of people that are free. And West Ham at the moment is an exciting prospect for someone to come in and manage. You look at the players that we've got, the talent that we've got, the European football that we have been playing. We have the opportunity to either go up or down. But I feel like this is crunch time because it's either make or break now. Because you look in two different ways where we're either going to change things and pick up for the rest of the season. Because it's not only the results. We've got underperforming players. We've got strategies that aren't working. The entire sort of gameplay that we've got just isn't working. You look at the the striker setup, where obviously we're looking for an Antonio up top that can just make things happen on his own. That doesn't work. So it really is getting down to crunch time because so much needs to change. We're going to lose Antonio. We've seen that without him at times, things are difficult and we've struggled to replace him time and time and time again because it's not really a sustainable model of football. There aren't many players that can just be a lone striker that make things happen and can barge people off the ball up top. It just doesn't really happen. And that's why all these players that we're bringing in aren't successes when we bring in strikers um so do you look at changing that there are so many things that it feels like need addressing and it really is getting to the time where either somebody new is going to come in and actually address these problems or we kind of just keep doing the same thing until eventually Moyes will get sacked because we're not getting the results because as fans we want exciting football we want results we want passion we want to be given a reason to scream our lungs out at every single West Ham game don't we but I think From owners' perspectives, they see it very much as a results-based business. So that's why I think Moyes will go if we continue how we are and we slip down the table and European football's gone. Um, I reckon Moyes will go. And I think that this is why they are holding out to make a decision. But in my opinion, I think a decision needs to be made sooner rather than later because what are you doing kicking the can down the road when there are evidently problems? So that's why I really, really hope work is being done behind the scenes to see what other options are available um, and to actually have those discussions and, and start the work on bringing somebody else in. Because if we carry on like this, I'm really worried that West Ham are just going to slip down the table, which after where we've actually been in the league, we, we always joke that we throw it away when we have an opportunity to go sixth or whatever. But we are really like we've got teams pretty much hot on our heels now. So a few more bad results and a few teams below us finding some form 
we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So we do need to turn things around quickly. And that's my little rant on on just the situation as I see it at the moment, because we've had difficult times at West Ham. But I think what upsets me the most as a fan is that we've got we've got this opportunity to be great. We've got this opportunity to attract another world-class manager, to to bring someone in, to really bring in these world-class players. Everyone would want to play again, alongside the likes of Paqueta and Caduce and Bowen. And we've got so many exciting players, but it just is not working at the moment in the way that we're, that the way that we're playing. And whether the dressing room has been lost, that was saying, I don't know, because the players often speak quite highly of Moyes. But for whatever reason, the strategy and the tactics aren't working. And at some point, you've got to just cut your losses and make a change. And the risk seems a lot lower now than it did previously, because we're not picking up the results. We are literally slowly, slowly sliding our way down the league. Um, and I can't see how we turn it around. I think that's the, the other thing, because in previous seasons, we've done quite well with a very thin squad. Um, and at the moment, we still have that thin squad. But I think summer is going to be our, our pretty much last chance to really bolster and build on this amazing team that we have before we risk starting to lose loads of players. Um, and I think a big part of keeping our best players is, is having this vision of where we're going and the vision of the team that we're building around them. But if you're on the verge of changing managers, we know as fans, there's so much uncertainty. I can't imagine how the players must feel, um, the pressure on their shoulders, but also knowing that at any point the manager could go, someone new could come in, not look at them very favourably and not even play them. I don't know sort of why a player that is world class would stay for too long when there isn't the certainty or the promise that they'll get game time, that they'll have a team built around them, that they'll get the support that they need to thrive on the pitch. So, Basically, the message of what I'm trying to say is I think that the board do need to act soon rather than later um, to stop things getting worse at West Ham. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. I'm genuinely intrigued to hear what you think. Um, I want to know, first of all, whether you would leave it any longer or whether you would make the decision right now. I'd love to know who you think that you would like to bring in, whether they're a current manager at another club, whether they're available, whether there's some random person that you've seen managing a Sunday league team that you think could be the answer. I want to know who, because <laughs> I want to I want to look at all the options and um, enlighten myself a little bit more. So I've been very busy with a baby and I've almost fallen out of touch slightly with all the West Ham to the extent that I used to be sort of involved with everything. Um, but yeah, so there, there you go. That is my take. That is my rant. That is how I feel about everything. Um, but essentially, I feel like we need to make make a decision sooner rather than later because you can only you can only blame so much on on a thin squad. We've got this thin squad now for the rest of the season. So we need to we need to find someone that can work with it, essentially, because we can't keep losing results. And especially we cannot keep losing games in that manner that we did yesterday, because simply put, it was embarrassing. And I think one of the main catalysts for me doing this rant is all the Arsenal fans that I know. I don't know if you've all had it. Let me know this in the comments as well. Arsenal fans that I've not spoken to in years, in absolute years. And this happens with Spurs fans as well. Pointing my pen to how angry I am. They've all crept out the woodwork. I have had WhatsApps from about 15 different Arsenal fans. I've had voice notes. I've had just abuse. I would never, I don't know about you, but I would never, ever do that. When Even when West Ham beat, like, I don't care if they beat Spurs, I would never go to someone of the, opponent, the opponent's team and be like, guess what, and just rub it in their face. So I've had that, and it's definitely riled me up. So... This is the chat today. But let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Um, it's always a pleasure to chat with you guys. I mean, it's kind of a one-way conversation in the next. I'm just chatting to myself. But it's always a pleasure to chat at you guys. And I really enjoy reading all the comments and hearing your thoughts as well. So please do leave us a comment. If you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up. And, yeah, it's going to be an interesting time at West Ham. And the one thing I can say, I don't know if you know Chris Ross, the West End, the East West End, the East End poet. He did a really good poem um, today that I really enjoyed. And I will pop it up in a video probably of this at some point. But basically just saying we've all supported West Ham through the good and the bad. And like there are highs and lows. And this definitely does feel like a low at the moment. But I'm sure there will be more highs. Um, and one of the things that we do always have as a fan base is that this really cheesy ending to any video. We all seem to pull together. And it makes me sad on Twitter or X when you see people just ripping others to shreds because they've got different viewpoints and different opinions. And I know that I'm guilty of definitely being more positive 
probably than I should be a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, we all have different opinions, but I literally love that I feel like West Ham Network and on Twitter, I've got a really good bunch of followers where we can have honest discussions where we disagree with stuff, but that's fine. And it's actually really interesting to have these conversations without just ripping each other's throats out. So shout out to all the people that will have a healthy debate. Um, and let's get a debate going in the comments because I want to know your thoughts. Do you make the decision right now to just cut your losses, get rid of Moyes and go again? because I feel like the time is nigh. So have a great day, whatever you're up to. Hope you enjoyed this rant. Um, but most importantly, let's have a better rest of the week. It was a bit of a shocking Sunday. We all know that it can ruin your whole weekend, but let's not let it ruin our week. Let's just move on and go and batter the next team. Hope for a better result. Come on, you irons. Bye. <laughs>